Good morning. Happy Thursday. Praise God for this day. He's blessed us with another opportunity to walk with him. I thank you for joining me. This is the Church of God of Prophecies Daily Bible Study. And I have to apologize. I've uh, been offline for a few days. I uh, work in night shift. And so um, I was unable to muster the energy to work night shift and do the Bible study. 67, things start slowing down. So uh, I'm back on days and back to sharing the Bible with you. Uh, we're beginning our fall quarter and the first part of the fall quarter, unit one is titled Creation in the Whole Bible. And our lesson number one is titled God the Creator. And so um, let's get started with a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning to say we are so grateful for who you are. We're grateful for your magnificence, the magnificence of your creation that just tells the story of how powerful and wonderful you are. We thank you, dear Father, for creating us, for providing for us, for protecting us, for loving us with an enduring love that will never fade. No matter what we do, you still love us, Father, and we thank you. We thank you for making a way for our sins to be paid for. Namely, the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for him. Thank you, dear Father, for your son, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth, living a perfect life, just like you do in heaven. You walk with the Father in total agreement fulfill the will of the Father and glorify the Father by your obedience and your agreement with Him. Thank you, dear God, for this lesson. I hope that this lesson encourages someone to know you more intimately because through you all things are possible. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your name. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, glory to the Father on high. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Okay, our daily devotional this morning is titled, God Gave Order to Creation. That's from the book of Psalms, um, chapter 8, <clears throat> and verses 3 through 8. And it reads... When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the fields, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. Praise God, He has been mindful of us. This plan, the creation, 
is um, centered around God's creation of man, man in his image. And so um, we marvel at the fact that God centered all of this around a fragile human being. This just speaks to the intelligence and the kindness and the love and the tenderness and the gentleness of our God, His creation. Okay, let me read the introduction to the fall quarter. It says, the story of creation is not found in Genesis alone. Lessons 1 through 6 explore passages from the Psalms, Jeremiah, Job, Isaiah, Hosea, Romans, Colossians, 2 Peter, Micah, and Mark, as well as Genesis. Thus, the unit title, Creation in the Whole Bible. <clears throat> The expositions were written by Homer G. Ray, who has served the church in many capacities, including editor-in-chief of Church of God publications, pastor, district overseer, and chairman of the ministerial internship program in Mississippi, an ordained minister since 1966, Ray is the author of three books, has contributed to other books, and has written numerous magazine articles. The second unit, Letter to the Ephesians, Lessons 7 through 13, is a study of this entire book, chapter by chapter. Through pinned, though pinned, during his imprisonment, Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus is joyful and victorious. Lessons 7 through 13 were compiled by Lance Korkmeyer, editor of the Evangelical Commentary and the Church of God Evangel for Pathway Press. Reverend Korkmeyer is a graduate of Lee University and the Pentecostal Theological Seminary. He serves the South Cleveland, Tennessee Church of God as missions pastor. <clears throat> okay, lesson one, God the creator. The central truth is that God created an orderly world and made humans in his image. The focus is to affirm the eternal God as creator of the universe and live as people created in his image. Our evangelism emphasis is being created in God's image should compel us to love and seek lost people in the way he does. And the golden text says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And that's from Genesis 1.1. Okay, our introduction uh, says, In Exploring Genesis, John Phillips wrote, It is a book of facts, a book of firsts, a book of faith, a book of funerals. It has been called the seed plot of the Bible because all the vast forests of Scripture start there as seedlings it is the book of Genesis Genesis is a Greek word meaning origin or source generation or beginning the original Hebrew title Beth Shith means in the beginning the book opens with an account of the creation of the universe. 
throughout its pages follows the history of the earliest stages in the life of the Hebrew people. It describes the devastating effects of sin. When it came into the world, the chaos that befell the first family, the birth of various nations, and the discovery of different stages of grace and faith. If it is fair to compare books of the Bible, surely Genesis would be one of the most distinguished. Consider the amount of history of humanity covered in its pages. Add to that the subjects it explores and how many themes it introduces that are developed in other portions of the Bible. And you see its uniqueness. It begins with the creative narrative and moves swiftly to the heartbreaking fall of humankind. But then it gives us the first glimpse of the divine provision of redemption. When the Savior will bruise the head of that old serpent, the devil. Genesis is a gift from God. In it, we will find promises, we will treasure, and divine assurance we will claim for our own. Amen. I agree with that. <clears throat> okay. Section 1, the Creator God. 1A, the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And they read, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. The Bible opens with the simple statement that the world had a beginning. If one minds cannot fully grasp that truth, we accept it by faith. We are in agreement with the writer of Hebrews who wrote, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. The Genesis account makes no attempt to prove the existence of God. It simply states it as a matter of fact. The existence of God came not by reasoning, but by revelation. In chapter 1 alone, the name of God appears 32 times. And if you add the personal pronouns, the number comes to 43. This first chapter also identifies God as the creator of the universe. This marvelous and magnificent universe he made out of nothing. The omnipotent God gave existence to things which before had no existence. In verse 2, Moses pictured the earth as chaotic, having no order or beauty. There are differing opinions of what this verse is describing. Some view it as a primitive state of matter when it was first created. <clears throat> Others believe the verse describes a later 
catastrophe that overtook the original creation. They point out that the word was can be translated became. <clears throat> the land had become waste and void. They point to Isaiah 45 18 to support this view. For this is what the Lord says, the one who created the sky. He is the true God, the one who formed the earth and made it. He established it. He did not create it without order. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. I have no peer. Isaiah 45, 18, in the New International Translation. Those who hold to this theory see a gap between verses 1 and 2 of Genesis. Over this chaotic state of earth and water, covered by darkness, the Holy Spirit moved. The work of creation is attributed to the third person of the Trinity. Job 26.13 reads, By his spirit he has garnished the heavens. Creation is also ascribed to the second person, the Son. John wrote, All things were made by him, meaning Christ, and without him was not anything made that was made. John 1, 3 God the Father's work in creation is noted throughout Scripture. <coughs> and we have an insert here titled The Infinite Creator. And it says, God's infinite power is manifested in the works of creation but isn't exhausted by them God could have created more than he has if he so pleased what God has done therefore is no measure of what he could have done or can do and that's titled, or that's written by Sam Storm, Storms. Nice, I like that. He is an infinite creator. Nothing is impossible with God. Okay, section 1B, unlike other gods. And I reference this Psalms 96 verse 5. And it says, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Amen. And the commentary says, Two themes surface in this verse. First, idols are worthless. They are nothings, vain things. One commentator called them dunghill, deities of the heathens though they stand in the place of the almighty they have nothing of his nature or power in them they have no divinity in them they these reputed to be gods by non-christians are not only not gods at all they are empty things that which is nothing can do nothing or make nothing Matthew Henry observed worship of forces and forms of nature of partial and degraded conceptions of the one living God all these have their place in the history of of the nations. The second theme addressed here is that God is the all-powerful and all-sufficient 
creator of the universe. He deserves from us the worthiest worship and highest praise of which we are capable. In the book of Revelations, the 24 elders are seen casting their crowns before God's throne and saying, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. And that's from Revelations 4.11 in the NIV. <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to keep going since uh, I haven't done anything this week. Section C is titled, The Powerful Creator. And this is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verses 11 through 12. And Jeremiah 10.11 says, Thus shall ye say unto them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. And the commentary says, the message the Lord is given through Jeremiah is intended for all of Israel to show them the folly of following idols. Idol worship was pointless because the objects being worshipped were made by human hands. One person would cut down a tree and another would shape the piece of wood into the desired symbol. Then this image would be overlaid with silver and gold and attached to a base so it would not fall. Then it was carried to the place assigned to it. It stood in total contrast to the living God. It was full of life or he was full of life. The idol had no life in it. He was everlasting. The idol was capable of disintegration. He is mighty. The idol is helpless before him. Verse 11 is the only verse in the book of Jeremiah originally written in Aramaic which is the language the pagan idolaters would understand. His message to them was that their idols had nothing to do with the creation of the world and that they would disappear from the earth and from under the heavens. Then Jeremiah addresses the true origin of things in verse 12. Almighty God made the earth. He alone is the powerful creator, the prudent preserver of all things in heaven and in earth. Therefore, he is the only true God. And that's a great point. If God created the heavens and the earth and no one else created anything that was created, then God obviously can be the only true God. No one else created anything. Even man, everything he creates is from what he's been given by God. And God has given him uh, the ability to manage the resources of the earth. But 
he's not man's not creating any resources they're all from God and so God is the creator man is not creating anything from nothing only God creates from nothing I thank you for your time I pray that your day is blessed and I pray that something you heard encourages you to seek a more intimate relationship with God. Have a great day.